Hey guys, in this video we're going to be looking at the essential WordPress plugins that you need for headless WordPress development. Now I've already got an example WordPress site up and running here and this is actually part of a new course I'm creating. It's a Next.js and WordPress course. So if you want more information on that then I'll leave a link in the description below for the full Next.js and WordPress course. However, I'm just going to use that example WordPress site to show what plugins I've got for headless WordPress. So there's the obvious ones like Advanced Custom Fields and Advanced Custom Fields Pro, Custom Post Type UI. However, the ones I want to go over today are the Disable Gutenberg Blocks, the Lazy Blocks, WP GraphQL, WP GraphQL Gutenberg, and WP GraphQL for Advanced Custom Fields. However, probably not actually going to go over that one because that's a fairly obvious one. Now, WP GraphQL, also a fairly obvious one. It essentially just allows you to query your WordPress data using GraphQL. So once you install WP GraphQL, you'll get this nice graphical IDE where you can query all your WordPress data just in one query. So any data you need can just be queried with one query instead of the REST API, for example, having to query the REST API multiple times for whatever data you need. You can just use one query with the GraphQL or WP GraphQL plugin installed. And this is what a typical GraphQL query would look like. However, this looks a little bit complicated. I'm going to strip all this out so it doesn't look so complicated. And I'm just going to do a basic query here. So for example, I'm just going to go page and content. And let's just see what comes back for that. And actually, let's change this to pages. So we want pages, nodes, content, and let's hit play on this. And there we go. We can see this is just an example page, or these are just example pages I've got in this particular WordPress site. And it just returns all the HTML for that particular page. And typically what most people do or what I've seen most tutorials do is they'll just dangerously set, for example, using uh, React, they'll dangerously set in a HTML with this content. However, I really dislike this approach. I much prefer receiving back JSON or JSON representation of our data, whether it be in WordPress or any other headless CMS, and use that JSON data to then construct the UI in, for example, React or Next.js. So this is where the other plugins come in. So if we go to lazy blocks, for example, I've got a bunch of custom Gutenberg blocks here. So this lazy blocks plugin allows you to create custom Gutenberg blocks. Let's go ahead and add a new block. I'm going to call this block something like two column grid, and we can add any fields here. So we're calling it a two column grid. So obviously we can assume that there's going to be a left and a right column. However, I'm going to skip over, over that for now. I'm not actually going to implement a two column grid for the sake of this video. I'm just going to add an example control here and let's just put, for example, left column content. We're going to keep it as text. Obviously in real world uh, situation, it's not going to be text. You'll have some rich data and things like that. However, I'm just going to show you for the sake of this tutorial, this two column grid. Note that we've got the left column content in the inspector controls. Now, so what we can do here then is give the user a preview of this particular Gutenberg block. So anytime we add data, it's going to give the preview of what that will look like in the Gutenberg block. So if that sounds confusing, don't worry about it. It's quite easy actually. So usually what I do is I tick this single output code for front end and editor. So this, all that we're, the code we're going to write here or the HTML markup we're going to write here is literally just for the client to see it in WordPress to have an example or like a kind of look and feel example of how it's going to be, how this block is going to render. It's not going to be exactly how it's going to render, but it just gives the client a nice idea of like a nice preview of how it could or probably will render or kind of look like. So all we need to use here is HTML and handlebars. So let's just put a div in here and within handlebars then, handlebars is very similar to React how you render data. So you just open up a, a two sets of curly braces and you can see already the IntelliSense here is giving us the left column content field that we can render. So because this is a text field, we don't have any, it's, for example, it's not an object. So we, it's not like to, uh, left column content dot content, for example, it's just left column content because it's a text field. So we're just rendering a string. So in here then we can add any styling and things like that. So for example, let's assume that this left column content has, is always going to have red text, for example. So we can add style in here and 
add color red. So again, this is a very, very trivial example I'm gonna show you here. And if we update this then, and we've got the two column grid here. If we go back to, for example, a page, if we add a new page, let's put grid example. And for the block now, if we hit here, we can see if we go to view all of them, all of our blocks, we've got a two column grid. So let's select the two column grid and we can see nothing is really being shown in this grid. However, if you look over in the inspector, so this is where we wanted our left column contents to appear was in the inspector rather than in the actual block. So now if we type some text here, we can see the preview here, some text here with the red colored text. So that's a very, very trivial example using lazy blocks. However, the next thing I want to show you which couples in with lazy blocks is the next plugin, if we go back to plugins, is this WP GraphQL Gutenberg. So it allows you to query each of your Gutenberg block fields within GraphQL and it will return the JSON interpretation of that. So let's go to our graphical IDE now that we've got some data in that example page. I'm going to clear that query out and let's go to, let's just go pages nodes let's query for the title and this graphql plugin now the graphql gutenberg plugin will give us if we scroll up the top here we should have this blocks so on this blocks then this is the representation of all our gutenberg blocks for a particular page or post so then what we can do then is query on a specific block the data associated with that block so the one we just created is the two column grid block so let's select this lazy block to column grid block. And then instead of attributes, JSON and dynamic content, let's query for attributes. Let's deselect those two there. And if we take a look here, we can see we've got the left column content. Now this is just gonna return a string because it was we added a text field for left column content. However, you can add any different data structure types or anything like that within the lazy blocks configuration for this particular block. So it's obviously, it's not just bound to strings. You can build out quite complex data structures within these blocks. However, we've just gone for a string for now. So if we hit play on this and we take a look at the results here, we can see our grid example page, just the one we've just created. We've got blocks and obviously we only had one Gutenberg block and that was the two column grid block. We can see we've created for the attributes on that two column grid block and actually, so it's a bit more readable. Let's go underscore underscore type name and hit play. So we can see that this is a lazy block to column grid block and we can access the attributes and left column content. And we had some text here, which was the string. So that's what I really, really love about using lazy blocks, using the WP GraphQL Gutenberg plugin as well, because you can query these attributes and you can create these little previews, these little snippet previews of your blocks that you've created in lazy blocks for the client to see. So a little bit more of a complex example then. I've already got some properties in this WordPress site. So this site is based on a real estate site. So properties is in real estate. So if we go and click through to a particular property, I've created this image gallery myself. So we can see we've got a preview for this image gallery. This image gallery was created using lazy blocks. So this is a custom block for lazy blocks that we've created in WordPress. So if we get, then go back to pages, I've got an ex another example here. So for the homepage, for example, I've got a hero block. So again, this is something I've created using lazy blocks. It's a hero block with the preview showing a, let's have a look here. We've got the header text and the background image. And I haven't implemented the CTA, the click to action label text or anything for this preview yet. However, this is just showing you what is possible with lazy blocks and how these previews can be used to show the client kind of how it's gonna look like on the front end. So the last plugin I wanna use, again, it's in my opinion, an essential plugin. If you're using headless WordPress for client sites, and if we go to plugins again, it's this disable Gutenberg blocks block manager. So if we go to settings and disable blocks, you can enable or disable all the core Gutenberg blocks. So if you don't want clients to be able to add audio, for example, to a page or avatar, or any of these core blocks, you can just disable them with this disable Gutenberg blocks. So again, this one is a really, really powerful one. It gives you a lot more control of what clients can and can't do on your WordPress site or on their WordPress site. So that concludes the essential plugins, in my opinion, for headless WordPress. Please give this video a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel.
and check out my other Next.js and WordPress crash course. I'll leave a link in the description below for that as well. So in the meantime, thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.